wearing some earrings and, you know, a bandana in this case, a bit of makeup. It's still a guy. That waiter is wearing they damn earrings, so when they come back, we better refer to them as they, okay? Is everyone on the same page? My name is Diddy, and I'm non-binary. Coming out is something that doesn't even exist. Without assistance from a black person. Oh, stop it. Stop. White people pay you for you to tell them how racist they are, and somehow you are still oppressed. Yes, general preferences are always transphobic. I did not go through homophobia growing up to have some woman saying that if you don't like vagina, you are transphobic. What views do you have in particular do you think have been most like controversial to people that you find people get triggered by so this is something i'd really like your opinion on actually because it's something i it's something i question and it, i'm i'm very perplexed on what the way forward is is it ethical to respond to woke tiktoks mm. because it's quote unquote targeting an individual so so my, so basically someone said to me and like i respect her opinion she's allowed to have it she yeah. said you you should be talking about your ideas but just targeting these whack crazy people isn't being productive at all and then my response was well the thing is and a lot of my friends probably wouldn't be very active on tiktok mm. with our age group but a problem with the younger generation is they get a lot of their ideas from these algorithmic apps tiktok being the yeah, biggest one and absolutely. you're actually going to the heart of like where this information is being spread in my opinion when you watch watch a woke tiktok reaction you're like oh this is just comedy and i have a tiktok as well and i'm surprised i've not been banned yet but i think being able to offer a counter opinion to what these young people are being fed and it is a downstream effect i think when, when i was saying it to her it sounded too outlandish right because i'm like oh, well you have this teacher convincing kids that they're neither a man nor a woman one of my kids was like jamie doesn't have a gender and then there are also teenage girls getting non-binary surgeries without nipples holy shit Mm -hmm. So these ideas come from somewhere. You may think, why are you going off on this teacher? She's just one kind of whack person who probably has a mental illness, doesn't deserve to be commented on. I think when you use that argument, you realize the scale of the issues when, when you have TikTok after TikTok after TikTok. I'm glad you mentioned Blair White because she was the person that actually made me understand a lot of the things I believed in were complete bullshit. I was won over to her side almost instantly because she did it in such a comedic way that I was like, oh yeah, this this is totally comedy that highlights truth you know in a mean? very compelling way so that does put you in an interesting bind it can be a really useful tool to help show people a different way when like yeah just normal communication doesn't humor can really highlight the contrast of how unrealistic or how silly something is lgbt representation publicly in the media institutions stonewall they're only driving one narrative around gender whereas the gay people of which there are many that are getting tired of how ridiculous and how many more new flags are there and like people aren't taking us seriously anymore. Why does pride have to be so sexual? People that are concerned about bringing us back to reality and just wanting to be a gay person but live as anyone. That narrative isn't allowed to be public. My other argument is you have all these people representing me online to the younger yeah. generation. So am I not allowed to look at what they've said and say, actually, this is what I feel. Off offer up something else. And then also it seems like culturally with TikTok, people are are much more comfortable at least i assume with putting their face online and then it's sort of fair game for anyone to respond at least that's what tiktok seems like to me because you always get people stitching each other i would say once you are putting it's not like you're going on someone's private like facebook and pulling some obscure thing you're finding these clips because they're getting views from a lot of people who are fully believing what they're being told a lot of very young impressionable kids a lot of times these people who are very online the ones who are messaging us and doing the most they are are very very mentally ill that is apparent as day that these are people who are suffering who have latched on to this movement to give them a purpose because they feel like they don't have a purpose in their life so they're they're going to defend that with everything they've got once they've identified with the cause it can be confusing for adults to sift through the amount of information that's being thrown at us kids are just so susceptible another reason why i'm concerned with the affirmation only narrative and system and that any questioning of any trans identity at any point is always transphobic. I know myself at this point, I know a lot of trans people and I know that transphobia just isn't something that exists in my heart really. In your friend group, mm. you had friction around it or how was that for you? So some of that is still unfolding, I would have to say. Common response I've got is 
someone decides to message me being very disappointed and upset and angered. And the message is just kind of uh, shame on you. How could you think this is a good idea? And in some ways, quite patronizing. The last one I got said, I really hope you find inner peace within yourself because clearly you're dealing with a lot of trauma or hurt from the queer community. That's just so patronizing. I started off with, with a family member going off on me and it wasn't necessarily surprising given the views I know this person possesses but that was very difficult because it was right when I just started Mm -hmm. and the thing about YouTube it's a highly rewarding platform right but it's the platform that takes the most work because if you want to make good long-form content that's a lot more work than a TikTok. Now we have YouTube shorts which in some ways I love and in some ways they've been my detriment with these people because they go on my channel and they'll just click on a couple of those and then they have 40 seconds of a clip which sort of puts in the most exciting bits, controversial bits to entice someone to watch the full thing. But that's enough for them to go, oh my God, no, I'm going to block this person out. So the short was just me saying, you know, it was me talking about puberty blockers and my content has changed quite a bit since then. But I was just saying, I don't, I don't believe kids should be allowed medically transition. And that was it. And then I was accused of being a transphobe. And when I tried to explain mm-hmm. that I'm concerned about gay kids and I'm obviously gay, I'm the only gay person in my family. And this person who is now very inclined to what I would call radical leftist ideas and social justice theory. I was then being told that biological sex is a spectrum and somehow white supremacy was brought into the argument as well. It was just a shocking experience because I think when I went into it, I was kind of thinking everyone gets cancelled, but I'm not going to let that happen to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, (laughs) right. stupid. I wrongly assumed that some people having known me my whole life might just go, oh wait, hang on here. I know that Jack actually from the 29 years I've known him is generally someone with good intent. And I do believe that. I think we've all been through things, but I think most people that know me closely would would agree, I hope anyway. It kind of shocked me and I didn't realize the views were so extreme. Everything's hypocritical to me in that some people believe that they're allowed send you 10 voice notes or 10 paragraphs and then if you even try and respond they say i'm not here to debate i'm not here oh, to yeah. debate and that was all <laughs> I'm i got not here and to educate I was... you you don't deserve my labor my emotional labor to educate you, <laughs> you know? exactly and it's like that's why we have actual what i think atrophy of mental functioning in some of these spaces because it's become so socially acceptable if you you can attack someone and then if they ask for any reasoning you can just say oh it's not my job to educate you And that's that. And critical thinking is really like it's atrophy, the muscle that you don't use. I think it's really positive, but like people like you are doing of like coming up and not being like, all right, now I'm a gender critical, you know, and I'm, I hate trans people now and now I'm going to be anti-trans. A lot of people make that jump if they're drawn to extremism to go from one side of trans activism to the other side of like, you know, full-blown turfdom. That's why I struggled for a while because I was like, once I started questioning certain things, what that brought me to was a lot of gender critical spaces. And then I noticed they had their own little weird rules and rigidity. The same thing I was seeking to avoid because I want to be a part of a movement that's all about finding connection and expanding human flourishing for as many people as possible. And I've seen hearts and minds change in the way that happens. 99% of the time is through commonality and through conversation. And when you really meet someone where they're at, they'll actually come to you really quickly if you're willing to take a step in their direction for the point of a conversation, if that makes sense. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I was further down the gender ideological position. And it all came from an experience I had of wanting to be kind and wanting to be accepted in lots of ways in the circles I was in. And some of these people I'm still good friends with, but I spent in London and in any big city, a lot of these queer circles will be very woke, if you know what I mean. But I I learned that I've never been protective over my opinions if I'm shown factual evidence to the contrary. And as soon as I was presented some stuff, I never resisted it. And I'm glad because I know a lot of people will see something go, no, 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 no. That experience I told you I had with a family member, I said, I appreciate your comments. You have a right to your opinion. I'd look, I'd really love it if you could watch the full 20 minute video that this clip is from, because I actually talk so much about compassion. I talk Mm -hmm. about getting kids the right amount of therapy. And the response was, I'm not going to watch that. So (laughs) yes, that's it. I encounter the same, just like blatant, like, no, I will not engage. You hit a wall. Even when people say that and they're making a conscious decision not to do it, they probably still don't fully consciously accept. I am blocking out anything that may challenge my belief because I know that my belief 
probably has more to it, especially if it's around gender ideology, because deep down, everyone knows a man is a man and a woman is a woman. But then it's just made super messy with kindness and the, the politics, LGBT rights, you know, all of this stuff. So I'm, I'm trying to learn from these situations because it is really difficult when you try and approach a situation from balance, from trying to see both sides. And it's, it, I appreciate it so much when someone like you says that to me, because when making content, you can get obviously a lot of people that just agree with you. And I guess I, I would get it from both sides online as well, because I'm in the middle. But it's 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 hard to process people I know personally, and I've known for years who now believe that I have hateful views, or I'm perhaps of bad character. I've seen them all very easily accuse me of things, but then they don't seem to have any conscience themselves of, I wonder what it's like for him to just kind of suddenly be so heavily judged and not be heard out. But because they believe that their views are the moral ones, then all of that behavior is justified. And that's the exact kind of stuff I'm trying to talk about. So I do live with a low level anxiety day to day lately because of these experiences. But I think with each one, I do grow stronger. I think the interview I did with a psychiatrist who treated gender dysphoric kids, he told me afterwards, he was like, just pity them. And I know that probably sounds mean, but if I see someone unable to engage with the topic at all, then I guess it is easier just to feel kind of sorry for that situation rather than get super upset. The first big cancellation I got was that same cohort at drama school we were due to have a reunion and they all decided that I wasn't going to come. I'm still very close with two people, but they don't conform to that group thing. They're kind of separate like me. Oh, that so, really hurts, though. It sounds like minor, but like to feel like you're being shunned from your social group, it's such an insidious insecurity. It's just a really dark feeling. I'm sorry you had to go through that. No, it's okay. It didn't overly surprise me. And bear in mind, these are people who I wouldn't consider friends anymore. I haven't seen some of them in a few years. But if mm-hmm. I saw them, I would probably have a good time, you know, and like a good night out or whatever. But the way they did it was they created a WhatsApp group without me. And then two of them were leading that. And they told everyone he has a TikTok and a YouTube channel. And we feel uncomfortable. We don't want to share the same space with him. But I'm not sure if anyone said we feel unsafe. Maybe, maybe uh, they probably didn't. But oh, I, I, I can already hear it in my ear. That's so wild. And that's the other thing. These words like unsafe. From what? Your mild so, criticism so, or so excesses <laughs> of some. That's the thing too. It's not like you actually are making comments content against trans people like fuck everyone who transitions outlaw transition trans fuck trans women. like some people make content like that you're not like so that's that's why it's it's agitated well, they're I acting think like so. it'd be unsafe like you would create this atmosphere just by your presence of like hate it's crazy really but i've been a part of many of those whatsapp groups where people were deciding what to do about someone at a show that's why i know how twisted this gets because i've been a bystander and that's why i feel compelled to speak more about it because i never felt really good about the lengths that people were going to but i knew if i step out instantly those lengths will be shot back on me so even if it's not a conscious that's thing it. that's it it's, it's gotta be like driving me in some way i'm trying not to feel strongly towards any individual because i I understand what that industry is like and the kind of spaces that they're always in. But this is an industry where everything is about your reputation. I don't want to diss it because some people I went to drama school with have been really successful and I wish nothing but the best for them. But I find it a lot less sophisticated than acting and film and that kind of stuff. It's extremely clicky. It's extremely Mm -hmm. bitchy. A lot of the gay guys within musical theater, not all of them, but there is sort of a pattern of always having a performative ego on show. Very fake, very two-faced and Mm -hmm people will easily throw each other under the bus for social capital. And generally what you'll find is the most horrible people and the bitchiest people are the most liked. So it's the people who will gladly bitch about every one of their friends behind their backs. And the people who created this group, I've seen that firsthand. The irony of it was I made a YouTube post about it and I said I was cancelled, this happened. And I said, these are people who for years I saw say nothing but very horrible things about other people that they're supposedly friends with. But it's funny how now I I'm the person that no one wants to be associated with. No one contacted me directly. Not anyone said, I want to hear what you have to say. Because I think they knew that if they put me in a space in which I was able to defend myself, people may actually see, oh, wait, I kind of see your point. But I learned that the girl who created the group has a non-binary family member and she took my views as a personal insult. And then the other Mm -hmm. guy said, I don't want to be in a room with someone who doesn't agree with gender identity ideology. And to me, I'm like, well, 
good luck to you. <laughs> yeah, good luck out there yeah. in the world. This is what I'd like your opinion on, because I acknowledged in a, in a video I made about that, saying why I left the left, that uh, a few of my YouTube shorts, I actually took it a bit too far. Hey guys, great news. First of all, what do you think of the hair? Just dyed it again this morning. <laughs> Probably dyed again tomorrow. I'm non-binary. Clearly for me, it's more of a goal of being the most gender bendy, you know, between mask and femme that I can be. Now, all the adults in my life are just becoming, you know, they can't stand me. I'm, I'm a head wreck for them, you know. No one's going to hire me. But then I realized... I can just get my validation from children. Because with me, I can be quite silly and comedic, right? Mm -hmm. And I do a section in my podcast where I react to woke TikToks. And lots of LGBT commentators do that. And unfortunately, those videos do get more engagement. And people people find them uh, both funny and they find them both based. People appreciate that. And a bit of comedy mm -hmm. goes with it. They were most offended by that. And this is what I mean by yeah. if someone doesn't agree with me or is the type to cancel me, then if they watch a YouTube short, they're even less likely to watch my full video where I lay yeah. out a much more complex argument. So that's one side of it. And then it leads me mm -hmm. to this and another friend that called me on the phone took issue with that as well and she said you shouldn't be responding to individuals and you're just attacking people and it just made me laugh this one girl who made a tiktok saying your whiteness is the heaviest thing about you your whiteness is the heaviest thing about you it was such a hateful video your whiteness is the heaviest thing about you <laughs> oh my gosh people that hear a white person talk on race i think it's very uncomfortable for them if they've not heard it mm -hmm. before and pushing back on critical race theory and stuff that black people say even that are in the ideology so i was told you can't talk about your whiteness and then my response was wait i can't talk about my own attribute because <laughs> my so response like was just saying the guy in the video he was like whiteness needs to come to an end whiteness needs to end and i was saying it's just a bit of a sassy video me saying you have our own culture hmm, i'm pretty sure my whiteness is here to stay and you know, there's nothing wrong with white culture. We're not yeah. all from the same slave owner line. It's a lot more complicated. And he had yeah. a blue beard and purple hair. And then I was like, <laughs> but you know what could end is blueness. Whiteness may not need to end, but you know what could end? Blueness and purpleness. It's right? so mild though. The fact that that's not even that, you know, and I actually like Blair White now, but I used to think she was like devil incarnate as, you know, well, not <laughs> devil incarnate. I actually have always hate watched her a bit, but like I thought she was doing harm to trans people is what I believe. And now I actually believe the opposite. I think she's actually done a lot to create a trans conversation and acceptance in conservative spaces. So that's actually a really useful thing for the trans movement. And then when I actually watched her content, I too was making snap judgments off of little things she says to be funny in the least charitable way possible so people are gonna do that no matter what but i would say you can't let that like hang you up as long as you know that when you're making content like you can tell when you're acting in hate or in love and fun and having positive energy and in the world as long as you're not coming from a place of watching a video and being disgusted or hating this person you can be disgusted by what they're saying and talk about that and it sounds like you just addressed what they said and commented on their hair color which is come on hair color it's not like an immutable like attribute you know like yeah. wouldn't be too concerned about that but i also get you don't want to alienate people who could there should be some concern with how you're coming off if you want the goal to be to reach as many people and i have i have been more cognizant of that it was one video that i took down it was someone being misgendered I'm misgendered at work on wednesday and since then i have been spiraling instead of commenting on it and the idea i kind of did my own parody of it so i was at work in the pronoun center of the gender ideology cult I'm a part of, and I was misgendered. Even though I am male, I present as male. So I came home and now I'm spiraling, but it's okay because I can use this as a reason to not have accountability and be a productive member of society. That was probably a bit too far. And it's easy with these woke TikToks to kind of start viewing these people as like not real because yeah. you know if you look at like the pronoun gal or Jeffrey Marsh, these people actually move through the world and they're real people. I wonder what a day in the life of the pronoun gal looks like. No, I wonder. <laughs>